without the man depicted in this mural in Girard, Pennsylvania, would we not have political satire as we know it? Join me today on Walk With History when we learn all about Dan Rice, a circus clown. Street in Girard, Pennsylvania. And this was the hometown of Dan Rice. Dan Rice was a circus clown, very popular. At one time in the 20th century, he was the most popular circus clown. And he, what he brought to the world was political commentary. He also influenced the way we depict Uncle Sam today. But this was where he would bring his circus in the winter months, he was inspired to come here through one of his animal trainers, and he would spend the winters here. The city has a marker, but another thing he did was he fundraised for this Civil War memorial. It's one of the first Civil War memorials to ever be dedicated after the Civil War was over. Dan Rice was influential in the circus circuit. So circuses were such a big part of the American experience. They brought entertainment to small towns that would otherwise not get entertainment. They brought them their first hand look at different parts of the world through animals and menageries so people could visit and see exotic animals that were not indigenous to America and people would train them. And the reason why the circus clown is so influential at this time is because you're in these big arenas where you really can't hear people very well. And when you can't hear people very well, physical comedy translates to a broader audience. So that's how circus clowns become so popular in the 20th century is because and really in the late 19th century is because they're bringing this universal language of comedy to all the people who are coming to visit. You don't need to speak the same language. You don't need to be able to hear. You can entertain. And Dan Rice capitalized on that popularity. And he did that by political commentary. <laughs> <laughs> He did that by his circus. He did that with the fundraising. And because he lived here in Girard, he was very influential to the area. Here I am in front of the Civil War monument that Dan Rice paid for, commissioned, and had brought here to Girard, Pennsylvania. It was dedicated November 1st, 1865, to 10,000 people. And there's a star here from the GAR. We've talked about the GAR before, the Grand um, Army Republic, and that is the Civil War, basically, membership group. I thought I was out. They pulled me back in. Uh, veterans who served in the Civil War. So they have a star represented here. Leonard Volk of Chicago, he is famous for one of the two life masks of Abraham Lincoln was commissioned to make this monument. And it's 27 feet tall. And this is a pillar. Most um, at this time were supposed to be obelisks, but this is a pillar. It's supposed to signify strength. And he puts on uh, the anchor on this side, represents the Navy. Go Navy. Anchors away, my boys, anchors away. And then the swords crossing, I think in this, for the infantry. This doesn't have any writing on it. And then the cavalry. And then it says, in memory of the officers and soldiers from Erie County, Pennsylvania, who died in defense of their country. And then artillery for the cannons. And then the stars, there's a flag draped over it, 35 stars. Um, the 35th was added in 1863 for West Virginia. And then there's a eagle at the top. All in all, it's a pretty nice monument and Dan Rice is responsible for it. He paid the money to have a commission. He paid the money to have it brought here. You can't deny the impact that Dan Rice had on American society. There's a book out about him called The Most Famous 
person that you know, that you don't know, because of the impact he made on America is felt today. Political satire is such a big seller today. All of these late night talk show hosts. Yes. Uh, all of these shows, they use political satire to move their star forward. Well, this week it kind of felt like Biden on those stairs. And we watch it for entertainment. So Dan Rice was really so influential and pioneering when it comes to this kind of commentary. It was recently revealed that Tea Party member Christine O'Donnell, the Republican candidate for Senate in Delaware, admitted back in the 90s that she once dabbled in witchcraft. Though I'll bet she never expected it to work. <laughs> To know that he stayed here, that he built his axe here, that his family was here, is just an interesting part of American history. So these lions are indicative of the front door of the home that Dan Rice built after he brought his circus here in 1852. This home was supposed to be a mansion, big, kind of ostentatious. There's a picture of it today that still exists at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Dan Rice was controversial when he came here. Not only had he been married for about 20 years, but he divorced his wife and then married a local well-to-do family's daughter who had just turned 18. Too young. She was actually younger than his actual daughter. And that kind of creates some uproar here in the town. So to appease the people, he built the Civil War monument. Now we are here to honor our most generous benefactor. So is the Civil War monument there because of actual appreciation? Or is it there because of circus propaganda? Or is it there to appease the public of Gerard after marrying their local townhome sweetheart? There was a first home when we, he moved here over where the American Legion is. That home no longer exists. But there is one part of his original circus life that exists. The Battle's Barn is where the animals were held. It's on Walnut Street here in Gerard. So as you can see, this stone pillar represents basically the beginning of Dan Rice's estate in 1854 when he bought his 600 acres here in Girard for the winter for his circus. The stone pillar on the other side. I walked from there to there. So this would have been his home. We are in front of the mural in Girard, PA that basically depicts certain historical aspects of their town. It was dedicated in 2019, and I'm standing in front of the Dan Rice depiction, but there's a lot of different things that impact the city. Uh, of course, you have Mark's Toys. There was a toy shop here, and it's still here, that makes Mark's Toys. The Erie Canal, they have a, this was a stop on the Underground Railroad, and you have the Civil War Monument, and there's a couple other historical aspects. So what I want to talk about with the mural today is Dan Rice. This is Dan Rice's costume when he would do his acts in the circus. He would wear striped trousers, he would wear a star spangled jacket, top hat, and have a white goatee. So it was Harper's Bazaar that used Dan Rice as a model to depict Uncle Sam. So that's where we get our depiction of Uncle Sam from, is from Dan Rice. The term Uncle Sam had been used before that, but the depiction of what he looked like hadn't been done until the 1840s, and they used Dan Rice as that model. So that is why he looks this way. Dan Rice's show centered around political satire. He would make fun of both sides. And he actually comes with, with the term get on the bandwagon because he, part of his show would be jumping on the wagon to support certain political ideas and jump on the bandwagon came from that. <laughs> did Dan Rice come to Girard, Pennsylvania? Dan Rice is born in New York. He's traveling with the circus. There really is no reason to set up your winter program in Girard, Pennsylvania. It's because of Alagrippa Martin. And Alagrippa Martin at the time 
was an amazing animal trainer. He is known for one of these awesome acts that he does with Hannibal the elephant. And he's able to get Hannibal the elephant, which at the time was a big elephant, and they would market him as a man killer, but he would get Hannibal the elephant, he would like sit in his tusks, and be able to be thrown around on his tusks. And I know it sounds crazy, but that was the act, that was the trick. And Al Agrippa grew up here, and he started to train horses when he was 18. The little circus ponies travel by themselves in their own boxcar. They have their own trainers too. Their trainers take good care of them and teach them to do tricks. He befriended Dan Rice, they became really good friends. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. He has suggested coming to Girard. With all this land, there was all this space to set up tents and acts for the circus to have some downtime, work on their acts, and really just have an area where the circus performers and the animals could all come and just relax and retire for the season. That's what Girard became for about 35 years. It was the winter area of Dan Rice's circus and it was all because of Ella Grippa Martin. After the circus disbands, he comes back here, he lives the rest of his life and dies, but he is the reason for Dan Rice coming to Girard PA. I think about the impact circus has had on the American people and how it brought culture to town, it brought jobs to town, it brought excitement to town, entertainment to town, it brought wonder. Um, you get the traveling people that come with it and their stories and before television, before everyone had a radio, before everyone could read and have comic books and newspapers, the circus was such an explosion of fun for rural cities because it could reach pretty much everybody. And you're bringing all these exotic animals. So the circus is so influential, which is why Dan Rice is so influential. Unfortunately, after the Civil War, his star pretty much falls and he gets divorced from his second wife that he married here in Girard. He tries to, his hand at the circus one more time and actually dies penniless in 1900 in New Jersey. After the Civil War, things start to change and really circuses after World War II pretty much lose a lot of their pull as well. Dan Rice and the circus of the past may be gone. But their influence lives on each time we watch political commentary, we see a picture of Uncle Sam, as well as the Dan Rice days in Girard that have been keeping his memory alive since 1965. It's Dan Rice days in the borough of Girard. Every year on the first weekend of Ger August, Girard celebrates the famous circus clown, Dan Rice. Yeah.